Now we've seen in the first course that if we had an object of mass m and it's attracted to some fixed point O under an inverse square law, then it's going to map out an ellipse. And we've seen that derived in that video in the first course, so you can always look at that as a reminder. So this was the equation which we derived in the first course, where the this is the polar form of a conic and E is the eccentricity. So if you're unsure of it, you can always check in the first course. But let's go back and we'll have a little look at this in the graphical calculator first of all, just as a reminder. And we've also got it drawn down here. But let's talk about it in the graphical calculator first and then we'll just talk through our equations. So I'll have the equation of the ellipse here in the graphical calculator. So you'll see that the eccentricity is given by this factor here, the 1 minus c upon a. Now if I was to make this value a tend towards c, so at the moment that um, c is equal to 1, so if a was to tend towards 1, then we'd have 1 minus 1, which is 0, that whole thing would be 0, and we'd be simply have the r would equal the value of c, which in this case would be 1, so it would just tend towards a circle of radius 1, and you can see that here, as the value of a decreases, we get the eccentricity decreases until eventually, when it gets to a value of 1, it just becomes a circle. And of course, whenever the a is less than 1, then we'll have a number here that's going to be head towards 0. So we'll have a number here. If that's less than 1, then this whole thing here is going to be greater than 1. So we'd have 1 minus a, a larger number. So that would be the square root of a negative number, which would get into complex numbers. So it wouldn't be um, defined for any values for whatever uh, the a is less than the value of c. Okay, So the value of a must be positive. So there it's heading off and you can see that the eccentricity increases, it becomes more elliptical. Now the other term here, the value of beta, uh, just generalizes this curve and it, it rotates it around a, a, another axis. So the angle theta here would be the angle from some uh, central point here to the um, actual uh, curve on the, the, the actual ellipse. But then let's say, for example, it was from this point here. So it would be this angle here over theta. But we can rotate the whole thing round by a, a factor of beta. And you can see the whole thing getting rotated round by beta there. OK, so that then gives us our equation of our ellipse. And that's us uh, derived it. So it's a kind of general equation of an ellipse that we've derived via the calculus of variations. So that's a reminder of the terms in this equation here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to write, rewrite this equation in terms of r. So we're just going to transpose this in terms of r. So we'll put in the value for c here, a1 minus e squared. And we'll put this in for the c here. And we'll also put it in for the c here. So I've done that in this line here. Now what we're going to do is we'll find the reciprocal of both sides. So the reciprocal of this side will be the r divided by a1 minus c squared, and the reciprocal will be um, 1 over all of this. And then we'll multiply throughout by our a1 minus c squared. So we're going to have our a1 minus c squared on the top line here, and we're going to have all this here on the bottom line. And whenever we cancel out this a, this a will cancel out, cancel with that a there as well. And when we take the square root of this 1 minus e squared, we're just going to get the uh, 1 minus e. And that's going to cancel with the plus 1 with the uh, minus 1 here. So we're going to be left with this a 1 minus e squared all upon 1 plus e cos theta plus beta. So we're going to be working with this equation here. So that's what our r is. Now, we've already seen this in the graphical calculator we can have our uh, ellipse here. And of course, our ellipse is going to have a point on the curve, which is going to be defined by our angle of theta. And our angle of theta, again, it can be changed by 
turning the whole ellipse around by a factor of beta. So this is our theta and our beta in our equation up here. And the value a1 minus e squared is the this value c, which in this case here uh, geometrically is this little distance. So we're going to have a point here, which we can call the focal point, which we'll look at in a minute. So we've got the focal point here. And we're going to have theta, which will be, in this case, will be our independent variable. And the value of r is going to be our dependent variable. So r is going to be dependent on the value of theta. And whenever we work through, we're going to have the value c1 is going to be our eccentricity e, and our c2 is going to be the value of uh, beta. So we'll see that whenever we go on to the next page. We're going to use the analytic method for finding our conjugate points. Now we know that we have our equation r is equal to a1 minus e squared, all upon 1 plus e cos theta plus beta. r is our dependent variable, theta is our independent variable, beta and our e are our constants. So we're going to find out partial r by partial e, so that's the independent variable by the first constant. And divide that by partial r by partial beta, that's the independent variable via the second constant. And we're going to equate these whenever the theta is equal to zero. So we want to work through these differentiations and we'll do that now. So we've got partial r by partial e and you can see here that e is on the top line and also the bottom line. So what we have here is the quotient rule for differentiation. So if we say that our f is equal to the top line, that's a1 minus e squared, and our g is the bottom line, 1 plus e cos theta plus beta, then the quotient rule tells us that we're going to have f derivative of g minus g derivative of f all upon g squared. So the f derivative here is going to be the derivative of this thing here. So that's quite a simple one. That's This is just going to be our minus 2ea. Uh, and the g derivative, so we're going to differentiate this one here. And again, this is uh, relatively straightforward. So we differentiate this here and we've got uh, the product rule. So we've got e times that there. So it's going to be our uh, partial e by partial e and the cos theta plus beta is a constant. So that's just going to give us the cos theta plus beta. So then we're going to have to put these values, four values, in for the four values here. So our f derivative is the minus 2ea. The g is the 1 plus e cos theta plus beta. And then we've got the g derivative times f. So it's minus the g derivative, which is this cos theta plus beta, times the f, which is going to be a1 minus e squared. So we've got this top line here, all divided by g squared. So that's 1 plus e cos theta plus beta squared, and that's you've got that there on the bottom line. So we'll call that equation one for the moment. So this is the us derived partial r by partial e, and we've got this equation here. So we'll make a note of that equation. We're then also looking to find partial r by partial beta. So again, we're differentiating up here. So what we'll do is we'll rewrite this in a more kind of standard form to make it a bit easier for us. But let's say our value k is the top line here, which is a1 minus e squared. And we'll let the value of 1, we'll just call that uh, the value, the, the L. And we e here for our eccentricity, we'll just for a moment call it m. You can put in whatever value letters you like for these. It's up to yourself uh, how you want to do the differentiation. But it means if we substitute these in, then this equation here at the top is going to uh, change and it's going to be k for the top line and we're going to have 1 which is now the L and the E is the M so it's M cos theta plus beta and it's all to the power of minus 1 okay so we're going to differentiate this whole thing here with respect to beta so that's relatively straightforward so we're going to have the k is a constant and it's going to be minus 1 times what we have inside the brackets that's what we have inside the brackets all to the power of minus 2, and then we're going to have to differentiate what is inside the bracket. So when we differentiate what's inside the bracket, L is a constant, and the cos becomes a sine. So we're just left with our minus m sine theta plus beta. 
So now what we can do is we can substitute the values back in for our m and for our l, and we're going to be left with this equation here, a1 minus e squared times e sine theta plus beta, all upon 1 plus e cos theta plus beta all squared, and that's equation number 2. So now what we're going to have to do is divide equation number 1 with number 2 and see what we get. So we can see first of all when 1 gets divided by 2, we're going to have this equation here divided by this equation. So it means that when we divide them, it's the same as multiplying by this reciprocal, and it means that this bottom line here will cancel with the bottom line there, and we'll be left with this line here divided by this line here. And that's what we've got on the first line on the next page. So let's go and have a look at that now. So that's that rewritten here. And do you note here that it's, it's all of this here, actually. It's all of that. Times this here. And again, it's all of this here. Times this here. Okay, so it means that this thing here will cancel with this, this here. And note as well, we've got an A term in each of them. So there's an A term in this here, and there's also an A term left here, and there's an A term, so that all of the A's can cancel out as well. So the A's disappear, and we're going to be left with the next line here. So that gives us this equation here. So you can see that what we actually have here, if I get this pro correct, we have this here times all of this. Okay, so it's times all of this. And we're going to have, again, this here. Times all of this. So it means that this is going to cancel with that. And we're going to be left with this line here. And then we can multiply throughout. And if we multiply throughout, we'll get this line here. And then we can simplify by having the minus 2e squared cos theta plus beta plus the e squared cos theta beta. So that's going to give us one of these. So we're going to be left with this line here. And this line here is going to simplify down again to this line here. So just work through that algebra. You'll see that this line simplifies to this. Now at this point here, we're going to set the value of theta equal to zero. So whenever we set the value of theta equal to zero, the theta disappears here and we've got the right hand side. And again, the theta is going to be equal to zero. So we've got the right hand side here. So this is our final equation here. But what we have to do is we have to rewrite this in terms of the angle of theta. So this has to be transposed to the angle of theta. So I'm not going to work through the entire derivation where I uh, uh, where I solve this for theta, I'll put it in the appendix because it's covered another page of mathematics and it's just algebra. So let's go ahead and we'll have a look at the final equation in the next page. So I've written the equation again here. Now what we have to do is transpose this for theta. Now I've not worked through the entire workings here. I've just written down what the final solution is. If you're interested, I'll leave the, all of the working in the appendix section. So if we replace this term here with just the value of alpha, we're left with this theta equals 2 inverse tan alpha. So the upshot of this is that, and we'll have a look at this in a second whenever we uh, will relook at the original drawing, but if this angle AOB is greater than 0 and less than alpha, then we're going to have a stationary uh, point uh, and it will be a minimum. Now, if AOB is greater than a value of alpha, then we're going to have a stationary point, but there won't be any minimum or maximum. So this is the where we're going to actually get our um, uh, minimum or our maximum within this range here. So let's have a wee look at it. We'll see exactly what these angles are. So if we head back to our original drawing, you'll see I've updated it slightly. Now, we're going to have the um, original axis here, okay? So this is the axis runs through. And notice that this is a focal point here, and that's a focal point. I don't think I mentioned that at the beginning. Uh, so if we were to take this angle here, this point here, A, then the angle here, theta, would give us our 
focal point, that our, our conjugate of A. So in effect, this point here would be our A dash. So these two points would be conjugate. And the angle here that we're interested in is the A, O, and B. Okay, so that's the angle A, O, B here. So we're able to say then, coming back here, that if this angle here is greater than zero and less than this value alpha given by this, then we've got a stationary point and it's going to be a minimum. And if it's greater than that value alpha, we'll have a stationary point, but it won't be a minimum or a maximum. So let's move on and we'll look at a similar problem, but we'll look at it for the direct distance law. And we'll be able to see the direct distance law a little bit more clearly than this whenever we look at it in the graphical calculator. So thank you for listening. We'll get you in the next video. Goodbye.